So how do you sew in a small space? In my Organize Your Sewing Room series, that is the question I get asked more than anything else. Today I am showing you a storage solution that is going to solve so many issues. It expands to your sewing triangle and compacts so you can tuck it all away. And best of all, you can easily make it yourself. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. This video is part of my Organize Your Sewing Space series. Part one, we deal with the sewing triangle. Part two, we deal with decluttering. Part three, we deal with organizational zones. And if you haven't seen it, I'm gonna put a link down below. A sewing room is a luxury that so many of us just don't have. We're sewing at our dining room table. We're sewing in a shared space. We've got small condos, and some of you don't even have this. So today I'm showing you a storage solution to keep your tools, your stash, and your projects organized. Then it expands into a functional sewing triangle with zones one, two, and three when you need it. So the whole system starts with this wire racking on casters from Amazon. It's 13 inches deep by 23 inches wide by 32 inches tall. And it should take you between 15 and 30 minutes to put it all together. I made sure that the casters had brakes and I adjusted the racks to be sure that there was enough room for my sewing machine. And so nothing falls through the wires. I also made these three shelf liners out of foam board I had lying around. I am making one presumption that you have a flat surface somewhere that you sew at. It can be a desk, it can be a dining room table, it can be a kitchen counter. And I am using this folding table behind me to represent that. It was a little grungy to begin with having been used in our shop, but I covered it with some shelf lining paper and it cleaned up really nicely. So no matter whether you're living large or small, the core is your sewing triangle, your sewing machine, your ironing board, and your cutting station. My 30-year-old Bernina is perfect for sewing in a small space. It has a small harp, but it does come with some accessories you need to account for too. I put my sewing machine in the middle of the second shelf. I keep the pedal, tools, and power cord in this bag, which also doubles as a scrap collector when I'm sewing. And I tuck them in here. It will make your life a whole lot easier if you have a cutting mat large enough to cut with the fabric. But since the fabric comes on bolts, what I'm really talking about is being able to cut a straight line through half that width of fabric. And an 18 inch by 24 inch mat can handle that. Now, you may not have enough room to do it side by side at your sewing table. You may have to move it to another surface in your space, or you may have to take your sewing machine off your flat surface and use that as your cutting table. And we are going to store our cutting board and rulers in the back of this unit in this sleeve I've made from an old flannel backed tablecloth. I folded the tablecloth in half, then turned the edges under so that the width measured 23 inches. I also turned under the edges at the top and bottom and used these clips to keep it all in place. Then I sewed around the edge at a quarter of an inch. Next, I made a fold at 28 inches. Then I made a pocket with the remaining length. Then I inserted an elastic underneath the fold and then I sewed a seam up the middle of the pocket. And then I sewed the sides at an eighth of an inch. Then I put a piece of Velcro on the back of the tablecloth at the level of the elastic. And then I finished it off by adding three rivets to the top. And I attached the whole pocket to my rack with three carabiners. For the ironing board, we're just using the top of this rack. You can make a full ironing board out of plywood, batting, and aluminized cotton like I did in my make your own ironing board video. Or you can just use a 12 inch by 18 inch wool mat like I'm using here and your wool mat can do double duty as a pincushion. 
You can use your cordless iron or you can use a mini iron. Both will work here. The cordless iron has the advantage that you can hook it up in another part of your room and not clutter up your space. And then of course the mini iron has the advantage of a small size. This small mat and iron was perfectly fine for pressing my piecing and sewing my blocks together. But at some point, you will have a quilt top to iron. So take your flat table, lay down a sheet or towel, and iron your top on that. And I store my cool iron in my thread catcher. I make sure I tie up the cord and then I tuck it in my rack. So that's our sewing triangle. Now what about lighting? You can attach a desk lamp to the corner of your rack. And if it has a swivel head like this one does, you can move your rack around so that it illuminates your sewing table or your cutting surface or your ironing board, depending on what you're doing. So now we have three things to plug in, our sewing machine, our ironing board, and this lamp. And plugs and cords are quite hazardous in a small area. So I have attached a power cord to the side of my unit. You could attach it with Velcro or twist ties, but I worked with my husband to design this 3D case that it sits nice and snug in. I have chosen this format of the plug so that those transformers can be plugged in and not block any of the other outlets. It also has four USB ports, so I can plug in my earbuds or my iPhone or iPad and charge them at the same time. How about a design wall? Here is my four-year-old flannel back tablecloth from my video sewing hacks from the dollar store. I have attached it to the wall many times with just masking tape, but here I have added some rivets and I've put some nails in the wall to hang them from, but you can use command strips or masking tape. And I just tuck it in beside my sewing machine in the rack. In part three of the Organize Your Sewing Space series, I talked about organizational zones, and it is no different here. You want your everyday tools so that you can easily access them and quickly put them away. And you also want to be able to see immediately if they are missing. So don't dump all your tools into one container. Take a moment to plan your containers based on how you use them. You might make a tool pouch or an apron, either on the table or on yourself to hold your zone one tools. Or do what I do, and I just put dividers in my containers. Do what works for you. And I store it here on my rack. Storage, again, you want to keep it clear and stackable. There is no miracle storage solution that will expand your storage without making your living space smaller. But this rack solution does have enough storage space for over 30 yards of fabric and two or three projects, plus some patterns and some books. And I tuck it away in my rack here. This whole small sewing space setup is so easy to set up. It's like five minutes tops and five minutes to take down. And you'll have your projects laid out with no fuss, leading to more time to sew. And best of all, when you're all done, you can pack it up all nice and neat and tuck it away, either in a closet, underneath a table. Because the rack has lighting and a USB hookup, it can even double as a side table or bedside table. Avoid building this so that you have things hanging off the side. Heavy items will make the rack unstable. It will also make it hard to move. And of course, it will make its footprint larger. So I hope you can incorporate these ideas into your sewing space. If you're interested in the rack and where I bought it, I'm gonna put the links in the notes below. Last week, I had Stephanie Hackney of Hobbs Batting on Karen's Quilt Circle, and we were talking about everything to do with batting. If you haven't watched it, I'm gonna leave a link down in the notes below for that too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts and subscribe to my newsletter at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.